I'm going to do these in reverse order of how I wrote them. Uh, this first one's called The Fallout. With the broom laid across the crooks of your arms, you tango with her in the kitchen. Her photo is on the fridge, her voice is in your head, leave your chest, not your arms. The fury of the cellos is rising and your hands are empty. Your steps are soft on the linoleum and you whip your lower leg round her left thigh, step right step in time with the staccato zips of the violin that crescendo to a dramatic seizure, leaving a hole to dip into. You dip and the broom falls. You look at her on the fridge, your neck prickles, embarrassed. You reread the flyer she smiles from. You read it for the first time, inviting you to St. Peter's Cathedral today, one hour ago. The black band about your bicep stretches as you reach for the broom handle, blurry in your eyes. The cellos start again, her voice. Remember, you're the lead. I'll always follow. Thank you. I guess I shouldn't say thank you after each one. <laughs> um, all right, this one I wrote. So I was really involved in poetry back home, and I've been here for a year and like two weeks. And uh, when I came in here a couple of weeks ago, it was the first time I really felt at home since I moved to Philadelphia. And I wrote this very, very early in the morning, uh, about 48 hours after I came here. This is called Impulses Rebuffed at 4 a.m. on a Wednesday. As a magnet's north will be drawn to another magnet's south, so my knife's drawn to my neck to make a second mouth. The blue end has in each iron cell a yearning to slam the red of it, and each night as my eyes heavy close, my life yearns for its opposite. For a decade now, and maybe more, my heartbeat pumps for pumps reverse. However, that same iron in my blood that bites and fights to make its copper tasted makes armor round my jugular to keep my blade unbasted. Not out of any existential uncertainty, but because when my blood thinks of my blood, it's stoppered with some sympathy. If mother, brother, father, friend, any sought to weave that sanguine tapestry, I know that it would be worse for my life than a simple end to me. That arid knife in need of watering, I would not unscabbard on a friend. I know that an eternal cut for them would be my auto end. I've thought these thoughts in circular, tangential and perpendicular. My life's engineers are entering into their twilight. Hearts still strong, eyesight worse. Their failing joints and slowing thoughts a common bitter blight. When at last their furnaces run cold, I pray, failing in tantum, I do not promise my water will stay hot nor that it's cooling will be random. Um, this last one is very straightforward about a conversation I had at a birthday party last night called Dolls and Dreams. At a party off Baltimore, I met a tipsy mystic. With skill, she spilled rainbows across her face glowing gaily against her shining brown skin. She said we shared a soul, and so we got to swapping dream spun spools. In my dream, I was the prince of a criminal dynasty in the near future and the South Pacific. I'd murdered my uncle for nothing, and as punishment, they laid me in a stasis coffin with a glass top and sank me in their river. On the day the last family member that I knew died, they hauled me out of the murk and revived me, preserved self, and took me to the deathbed of my niece, only seven when I was sunk, now a shriveled and still 112-year-old grandmother. They pulled out my teeth and collared my neck, and my descendants kept me as a slave till my death, summoning me by rattling my teeth in a wooden cup 
that I could hear wherever I was. In the mystic's dream, she was coaxed into bed by a lover long past rejected, while her instincts screamed to run. So she was split in two, and one of her escaped and the other was caught, for soon after she slid into that bed, the slave catchers burst in their, uh, burst in. Her cautious self saw how they snatched the black artists and forced them to make art slavers wanted in the spaces slavers made. I asked if she had a history of prophecy. She told me to wake the fuck up. Then she spoke of time. She said her past and future selves called to and pulled on each other at every moment of decision. She is 34 and her 24 year old self could see the now of her and wept to bring it true. I told her we were Matryushka made of one-way glass. Our past selves could not see the us to come, but each doll of us can see each doll of us that was. And on the day that we look to our future and do not see our own reflection, we will know we are our last selves. She told me to write that down. Thank you.